Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gomez Singh. In our top story, the controversy over the re recent Republican caucus in St. Croix continues. On Tuesday, the different parties appeared before VI Superior Court Judge Kathleen McKay to argue their points. Another player has also entered the legal fight, as we mentioned yesterday, and her lawyer appeared in court as well. News is April Knight has that story. GOP political strategist John Yob went to the VI Superior Court today. Yob's camp wants Judge Kathleen McKay to issue an injunction that would ultimately decide whether Yob and three others get to go to the Republican National Convention as VI RNC delegates. The judge's ruling would decide whether Yob, the top vote getter in the Republican caucus on March 10th, stays on the ballot or not after the election system deemed him ineligible to vote. This this is crucial. The Republican caucus rules state that individuals must be eligible to vote in order to run in the caucus. And VI RNC Chairman John Canegata says he's committed to upholding the law and caucus rules. Unsuccessful caucus candidate Valerie Stiles sent her lawyer Ed Barry to file a motion to intervene because according to Barry, she has a higher stake in the outcome. The judge granted the motion so it was Yob against Stiles and elections Supervisor Carolyn Fox. Yob's camp insists that the whole issue boils down to this. Is there or is there not a 90-day VI residency requirement before an individual can register to vote, as stated by election supervisor Carolyn Fox? Yob's lawyers said there's nothing in the law that says that. Kanegata is also waiting for the ruling, but he said if Yob is taken off the ballot, there will be no repeat of the caucus. Uh, we would not be holding another caucus. Um, the results basically received on March 10th. Uh, those are the initial results, and basically the, the ruling from today will decide where we go, whether he's on the ballot as a legitimate a legitimate um, constituent of the Virgin Islands and a voter, or he's not. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Now, John Yob also spoke to us in News 2 about the various allegations against him. We will have more in a later newscast. Governor Kenneth Mapp is honoring his January pledge to faithfully negotiate and implement raises for government employees and agriculture department workers will be among the first to see increases now that a new three-year agreement with the Our Virgin Islands Labor Union has been successfully executed. Chief Negotiator, Negotiator designee Natalie Nelson Tang Hao announced Monday that the governor has signed off on a collective bargaining agreement with an expiration date of September 30, 2018 for the Department of Agriculture employees. Announcement about uh, the announcements about other departments are anticipated in the weeks ahead. Vitima reports that about half of its employees will see increases in their next paychecks, with the remainder still being processed. The finance department is prepared to issue raises as soon as an agreement is finalized with its unionized employees. Commissioner, Commissioner Valdemir Collins said Attorney Tang Hao stated that the Office of Collective Bargaining has prioritized addressing expired union contracts per Governor Mapp's mandate. She said agriculture employees can expect to see their raises in April. She added that it was critical senators act favorably, favorably on Bill Number 31-0320 heard in a recent meeting of the Legislature's Finance Committee so that salary increases can be finalized for employees of the Bureau of Corrections, Bureau of Internal Revenue, Division of Personnel, Office of the Lieutenant Governor, Virgin Islands Fire Service, Department of Human Services, DLCA, and VIPD. Royal Caribbean International's Freedom of the Seas will arrive earlier than scheduled on Wednesday, March 23rd at the Waiko Dock. Waiko says it was originally scheduled to arrive at 11 a.m. The ship will now arrive at 9 a.m. from the Bahamas and will depart at 7 p.m. for St. Martin. According to the most recent cruise industry survey, the average cruise passenger spends a little more than four hours in our port. And that came from Joseph Bichelti, president and CEO of Waiko. He said with, with uh, passenger spending locally up almost 5%, any additional time visitors spend on the island enhances their cruise experience and certainly benefits our economy. Freedom of the Seas can accommodate 3,634 passengers and 1,300 crew members. In crime reports, on March 22nd at approximately 3.50 a.m., police responded to a call from the 911 emergency call center in regards to an unresponsive 
male on Red Rins Gata in the vicinity of Savan. Upon arrival on the scene, officers came in contact with a man lying motionless near the side of the road. Preliminary investigations revealed that the male victim, later identified as 23-year-old Kishan Fleming, sustained multiple gunshot wounds about the body. The emergency medical technicians indicated that the victim showed no vital signs of life and pronounced him dead on the scene. Call police if you have any information that can assist. In light of the recent and past recurring incidents, St. Thomas Rescue would like to advise the public that rip currents and high coastal waves are unexpectedly strong and risky. High surf advisory remains in effect for coastal parts of the Bay Area. These waves can sweep the most experienced of swimmers or divers back into the sea uh, of the rip currents. The National Weather Service says large breaking waves are expected near offshore reefs and safety agencies onshore will be on alert. Meanwhile, no update to report. On Friday, March 18th at roughly 6.08 p.m., officers were dispatched to Peterborg Point where 22-year-old Savannah Ray Finn of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, was washed off from the rocks, as we reported. She was accompanied by two friends and her boyfriend, who was washed off from the rocks but uh, with her, but they managed to climb onto the rocks and were rescued. Chief Thomas stated that the female victim went face down into the water and had appeared to be lifeless. He said the high surf and rough waters prevented his members from rescuing the victim during that search. The female victim disappeared into the treacherous wave waters and did not resurface. The search for Savannah Finn continues. Family members, meanwhile, have taken to social media to ask boaters, paddle boaters, divers, and hikers for help and shared this last picture of her, a uh, picture there wearing that orange T-shirt they said she disappeared in. District Court Judge Curtis Gomez sentenced on March 17th Alva Nicholas, 57 to nine months imprisonment and five years of supervised release for possession with intent to distribute marijuana. On November 4th, 2015, Nicholas pleaded guilty to possession with intent to distribute marijuana. According to the plea agreement, Nicholas was arrested by Immigration and Customs Enforcement's Homeland Security Investigations agents at the Sierra Lee King Airport. After his arrival on American Airlines Flight 2379, agents detected an anomaly, anom anomaly inside a suitcase bearing Nicholas's name and flight tag. After further inspection, agents found a 3.4 kilograms of marijuana wrapped in plastic inside his suitcase. Nicholas was taken into custody. While well, we continue to monitor the spread of the Zika virus, the Virgin Islands Department of Health continues to work with the Centers for Disease Control in tracking the number of cases on all three islands, which has increased as of Monday. The health department is also stepping up its vector control efforts. News News April Night has more. Zika cases are slowly but steadily rising in the territory. On Tuesday, the Department of Health released its weekly Zika surveillance report, indicating that there are now 12 confirmed Zika cases. On Monday, the department reported its latest case on St. Thomas, a 39-year-old male. There have been 94 reported Zika cases in the territory, 61 on St. Croix, 31 on St. Thomas, and 2 on St. John. The health department continues to test pregnant women without symptoms of Zika. As of Monday, the department has received samples for 402 pregnant women. Lab results have been received for 152 of those and all have been negative except for two reported dengue positives. No cases of Zika have been confirmed in pregnant women in the VI. The CDC has been urging pregnant women in particular to take extra precautions. Pregnant women especially since they're at higher risk for complications from dengue. They are not at higher risk for complications to themselves. We want pregnant women who have symptoms not to be taking aspirin or non-steroidals because it could lead to the uh, hemorrhagic complications. Still, there are more Zika cases on St. Croix than on St. Thomas. As the cases continue to rise, the VI Health Department is ramping up its efforts to control mosquitoes in the community. The department hired a private contractor to launch vector control efforts that have been ongoing for a few few days now, they're still urging the community to do their share on the home front in the fight against Zeke. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Count on 2 to keep you updated. Now, you saw some blue yesterday. It was on behalf of the over 400,000 Americans living with Down syndrome. 
The USVI joined more than 33 other states and territories to promote the Light the Way campaign. The initiative is spearheaded by New Jersey's First Lady, Mary Pat Christie, in an effort to support Down syndrome cognition research and awareness. Governor's residences throughout the nation was illuminated in blue, marking the 11th anniversary of the Light the Way. In both Sheldon Amali and Christian said, you see there, Government House was bathed in a soft blue light. On St. John, the battery was illuminated as well. Down syndrome is the most common chromosomal disorder occurring in approximately one in every 700 births. Belgium raises its terror threat level to its highest and surrounding European countries remain on alert. This in the wake of two attacks during Tuesday's rush hour in the capital of Brussels. The Belgian government reports at least 30 people are dead and more than 230 injured. ISIS has claimed responsibility. Karen Kaifa is in Washington with the latest developments and the U.S. response. In Belgium, worst fears realized. We were fearing terrorist attacks and that has now happened. Morning attacks on a subway station and the Brussels airport. There was an explosion, yeah. And soon after that one, there was a second one. ISIS has claimed responsibility. It started with two explosions in the departures hall of Zaventem Airport, outside of airport security checkpoints at around 8 a.m. Brussels time. About an hour later, an explosion at the Malbec subway station, close to a number of European Union offices. Both attacks at peak morning hours. I can't, can't explain. It looked like war. It's uh, unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's uh, really hard. Belgium's federal prosecutor says the two men in black seen here were responsible for a suicide attack at the airport. Officials are looking for the man in white as a suspect. The terror just four days after the arrest of Salah Abdeslam, the last suspect sought in November's Paris attacks. While noting it is still very early, Belgian security sources told CNN it's their working assumption that the network that carried out the Brussels attacks is the same that carried out the attacks in Paris. President Obama addressed the Belgium situation at the top of remarks in Havana. We will do whatever is necessary to support our friend and ally Belgium in bringing to justice those who are responsible. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., no specific threats, but heightened security at transportation hubs like New York's Penn Station and at airports in major cities like Washington, Chicago, and Los Angeles. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Well, keeping our eye on the economy, let's take a look at the New York Stock Exchange with our Stock Market Watch. According to the numbers there, the Dow down 41, NASDAQ up 12, S&P 500 also down. Coming up on News 2, VI Lottery representatives want to let you know that Easter egg hunts aren't the only way to win big this month. Your winning VI Lottery numbers are coming up next. We'll be right back. Welcome back. The Department of Licensing and Consumer Affairs did a survey of gas prices on St. Thomas and St. Croix. On St. Thomas, self-service regular runs as low as $2.48 at Texaco near the airport, while diesel runs as low as $3.35 with Boeing's trucking. On St. Croix, meanwhile, Superior Service Station leads retail gas sellers in terms of the lowest prices. Their regular premium and diesel all run at $2.49. On both islands, prices are as much as $1 higher for full service. Governor of Juan F. Luis Hospital and Medical Center welcomed 20 inductees to Juan F. Luis Candy Striper Volunteer Program Thursday at the ben Benny and Martha Benjamin Conference Center at the Virgin Islands Cardiac Center. Members of the Territory's Board of Nurse Licensure were present, and the keynote speaker for the evening was the board's chairperson and former one of Louis Chief Operating Officer, Anne Dutte. Candy Stripers are known for their red and white striped uniforms and have been providing assistance to hospitals throughout the United States for more than 70 years. The students' family members assisted in the ceremony by placing the traditional red and white pinafores on the respective students. Antilles Invention Convention puts new twist on old science fair. Seeking to put a new twist on the everyday science fair, Rebecca Ferex, 7th and 8th graders, turned Antilles Lower School Auditorium this week into a STEAM, Science, Techno Technology, Engineering, Art, and Math Expo 
of epic proportions. Also focusing on safety, many other students worked on solutions for everything from everyday cuts on the playground to skin cancer protection. Some of the students pictured included right there, Haley Belcher, Janae Buschelti, Kathleen Russell, Heba Daz, Lamont Don Johnson, and uh, Viren Punjabi. The St. Thomas 17 and under zero tolerance team traveled to Turks and Caicos this weekend to compete in the 2016 Rising Stars Caribbean Classic Basketball Tournament in the first game of the series. Zero Tolerance beat Youth Center 63-24. The next game, they lost to the Dominican Republic 62-68. They went on to defeat Grand Turk 62-44 and Howell 66-62. After taking that tough loss to the Dominican Republic, Zero Tolerance emerged victorious as the tournament champions. They met with the DR again for the title game, defeating them 86-85. Issa Tatum, Sean Evans, Dwayne Lynch, and Terrell Lake were the top players for the team, leading them to the championship title. Issa Tatum, tournament MVP, scored 38 points and 10 rebounds during the championship game. Other team members are Himoy Andrew, Ja'Kai Jackson, Jordan Knight, Najee Mercer, Christian Montenegro, and Shermoy Ogaro, this group of outstanding and talented young men. They were accompanied by Zero Tolerance Organization President Boyd, Boise Todman, coaches Raheem Smith, Alba Swan, and Terence Lake, and trainer Alan Haynes. Good luck to the team there. Virgin Isles Department of Education officials, family members, friends, and former and current employees of the BCB Middle School fill the school's cafeteria on March 18th for a special ceremony to dedicate the school's gymnasium in honor of longtime BCB physical education teacher and coach, 60-year-old Adi Enrique Henneman. The joyous occasion was the culmination of a process that began in 2012 when the 29th legislature, through nomination from former Commissioner of Sports, Parks and Recreation Stanley Smith, authorized the BCB Gymnasium be named in Mr. Henneman's honor. He was employed with the Department of Education for more than three decades and retired on August 31st, 2011. The multi-talented athlete was praised for his prowess in basketball, baseball, volleyball, tennis, and many other sports. Commissioner Don L. Hendry of DPNR is pleased to announce that the Friends of the St. Thomas Public Libraries have generously donated a book drop to the Charles W. Turnbull Regional Library. The book drop, pictured there, has been installed at the front entrance of the Tutu Park Mall, open 24 hours a day. The convenient book drop is located under the covered awning, public entry mall, walkway adjacent to the post office door. Library staff will make daily afternoon pickups of returned books deposited into the book drop. The department also reminds the public that the book drop at the old Enid Ball Library is also still an option for returned books. And just a reminder, there will be a change in programming this week due to the 2016 NCAA Basketball Championships that will be aired here on CBS TV2. Therefore, News 2 will not be aired at its regularly scheduled times on Thursday and Friday, March 24th and 25th. We will be back on air on Monday, March 28th with our regular scheduled programming. Friday of next week, there will be no newscast due to the Good Friday recognition. VI Lottery wants to let you know that Easter egg hunts aren't the only way to win big this month. Executive Director Juan Figueroa Sr., along with the management and staff of the Virgin Islands Lottery, would like to wish everyone a safe and happy Easter. Every ticket has a chance to win part of that 704 300 uh, total prize money, including the top prize of $175,000. Here are your winning numbers. The VI Lottery presents draw results of today's drawing on News 2. Here are the top prizes. Fifth prize for $20,000, 15542. 15542. Fourth prize for $30,000, 08081. 08081. Third prize for $40,000, 31484. 31484. Second prize for $65,000, 07535. 07535. And the winning ticket number for the grand prize for $175,000 is 19727. 19727. If your ticket number wasn't called, keep trying. One of these days, your number could win. 
The next drawing is April 7th. Play the VI lottery and imagine the possibilities. And good luck as you check those tickets. Stick around, your news to AccuWeather forecast is coming up next.